Is there actually a simple formula to successfully design a feature following the rules of the clean architecture? Maybe. Let's get to the blackboard and develop such a design together. So here's the context. Imagine the build farm of a big software project, which consists of hundreds of systems which build, analyze and test this software. And as with every machinery of so many moving pieces, there are issues. These issues need to be added to a ticket system to ensure that every single issue is documented, analyzed and finally resolved. So let's design a software which analyzes the logs produced by the build farm and creates those tickets with all the relevant information automatically. Let's start by thinking about the steps the software needs to perform. It first needs to fetch the logs and extract all the errors. It then needs to analyze those errors in order to be able to create tickets which contain all information needed to understand the root cause of those errors. And these tickets finally need to be written to the ticket system. We start the design process by separating these three concerns to allow those to evolve independently. The log reader obviously needs to connect to the build farm to fetch the logs. It does this using a third-party library provided by the CICD framework used in the build farm. Because of this dependency, the log reader will be in the frameworks layer of the clean architecture. The same applies to the ticket client. It obviously needs to connect to the ticket system using a library provided by the ticket system vendor. So the ticket client will be in the frameworks layer as well. The analyzer contains all the application logic of our software and therefore is located in the use cases layer of the clean architecture. Now the analyzer needs to call the log reader as well as the ticket client to complete the requested task, but calling these components directly would violate the dependency rule because these calls would lead to outward pointing dependencies. To resolve this conflict, we apply the dependency inversion principle. So we introduce an interface iLog reader in the use cases layer, which is implemented by the log reader and which is then used by the analyzer to fetch the logs without violating the dependency rule. The same technique we apply to the ticket client. Of course we will also have some data structures passed between those components, which will be defined simply in the most inner layer using these data structures. In the current design, this would be the use cases layer. Ok, we got the basic setup of our software following the clean architecture. The major concerns are separated and all dependencies are pointing into the right directions. Now imagine we put lots of information in those tickets. So we definitely need some proper formatting of the ticket description so that it remains readable. Luckily, the ticket system supports HTML for the description field. But where do we put the HTML creation in our design? In the clean architecture, this would be the job of a presenter located in the interface adapters layer. Now we want the analyzer to hand over the created ticket objects to the presenter, but of course we need to apply the dependency inversion principle here again to not violate the dependency rule. And with this, the iTicket client is only needed by the presenter, so we can move this interface to the interface adapters layer. We also create a dedicated data structure to pass the HTML formatted ticket to the ticket client. The reason is that we want to be very explicit in our design. Seeing a ticket or an HTML ticket object in the code, it should be obvious whether this object contains raw data or formatted data. We also want to allow these two classes to evolve individually. At this point we got almost working software. We only need to add the main component which composes the different pieces together and finally calls the analyzer to start the whole process. In a command line application this would be the program class. Now we could actually execute our software. But there is still one important aspect missing in our design. There are no tests. The clean architecture recommends to always have a dedicated test API to avoid coupling your tests to the actual design of your software. I'll tell you why this is very important in the end of this video. I put the test API into the interface adapters layer so that the tests cover controllers, presenters and other adapters as well. And this raises another question. Assuming the log reader not only fetches the logs from the build farm, but it also does a serious amount of parsing of the log data, how do we test this code? Testing code of the frameworks layer is usually way harder due to its dependencies to third party libraries and external systems. So we better adapt our design and move all code which does not have these painful dependencies from the frameworks layer into the interface adapters layer so that we can use it from our test API. We then apply similar ideas to the program component. Apart from composing the application, it probably also handles command line arguments and maybe parses some config files. Such code we also factor out into the interface adapters layer by creating a controller component. 
Finally, we can connect the test API with all the adapters to complete the testing aspect of our design. So here's a simple formula to successfully design features following the rules of the clean architecture. Start with the application logic, the use case interactors. Push any I.O. to the corners of your design. Put parsing and formatting code in between in the interface adapters layer. And apply the dependency inversion principle to have the outer layers depend on the inner layers and not vice versa. And if you now want to know why it is critical for your design to have a dedicated test API, then watch this video next.